My journey really started in the bowling industry after that adventure. Did one real estate deal before COVID. Since then, done some extra deals in our area, just syndicated a 34 unit. The structure around it has really changed our lives. I think there's two ways to get in the deals. You either bring the deal to the table or have the money. And I didn't have the money, so I brought the deals. I think I'm fairly good at creating systems. I get notified of every multifamily property in the state of Arkansas that comes up. That way I get first crack at it. Figure out what you want in life, but if you don't know why you want it, you'll never wake up in the morning at 4 a.m. to do it. Decided to make these episodes really more deep dives into our guests' deals and really give you more practical and actionable items for getting started and doing your first deal, especially if you're new to multifamily. And of course, I've got my co-host, Mark Nagy, on with me. Mark, what's happening, brother? Hey, Rod. Good to be here, especially with a guy who, uh, speaking of deals, I just invested on one of his deals. So I'm excited to get into some of this stuff with him today. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, we've got Chris Moyer on today. And Chris, is he's in about 59 doors, I believe leave uh so far and uh, what's what's interesting about chris is he's very creative he's done some very creative deals creative financing you know like no money down kind of stuff so i'm i'm really excited to dig into that welcome to the show brother thank you rod thank you mark for having me absolutely so why don't you take a few minutes and give us you know a little bit of your history i i got it here and it's you've done a lot of stuff and so kind of give us a high level overview of your background where you came from and why real estate and and then just bring us current man yeah uh my journey really started in the bowling industry i ran a bowling center for a number of years and after that adventure i uh, did one real estate deal before covid uh did the opposite of what I should have done during COVID and locked myself in a room and didn't do anything. And then coming out of COVID decided that, you know, I didn't want to be scared and worry about, you know, what my W2 job might do to me. So jumped right in and started doing some more real estate deals. Uh, before I joined your program, I had 11 doors and uh, realized quickly that it just wasn't really scalable. So decided to talk to some others, uh, look at different ways to uh, either finance deals, you know, do more doors and uh, came across you. And, you know, since then, uh, you know, done some extra deals in our area, uh, just syndicated the 34 unit and uh, that the whole program and the structure around it has just really changed our lives and been able to really, uh, you know, just do more. Well, I appreciate that. But let's let's dig deep here. What do you think is your superpower as it relates to the multifamily business? Because I know you've got, like I say, a varied, you've done some sales. Um, you've, uh, you've, you've worked in the hotel industry. Um, you've done all sorts of different things um, f from, you know, the holiday events to the maintenance department. And, you know, talk about some of the skills that you bring to the table that have helped you in this business and maybe then who you've also aligned with to offset any areas that you need to be offset. Like, like, you know, nobody does everything in this business. So maybe speak to that a little bit, just the whole, what you bring to the table, your skill sets and the, and the team environment. Yeah. I'd say the underwriting piece, I really stuck to right away. Uh, you know, I think there's two ways to get in the deals. You either bring the deal to the table or have the money. And I didn't have the money, so I brought the deals. And so I just really stuck to the underwriting right away. And I, I think I'm fairly good at creating systems. So we have a couple of virtual assistants that do a lot of the work for me. And, you know, I work a full-time job, so I, I can't spend 40, 50 hours a week just dedicated to this. I uh, have to, you know, have a family, have to sleep still and all. So uh, those two things have really helped. Uh, I have a construction background. Um, but not nearly as deep as my partner. So my partner has an engineering degree and he can really dive deep into that aspect when we get on site for a property and, and probably see some things that I would never see in a property. And, uh, you know, so that's how you can partner with somebody else. Uh, so, you know, I'm great with the numbers and, and he's great with the on-site stuff. Is that your main, that's your partner? Yes, sir. I asked just because he'll be on the podcast next week. So if you guys are listening, yes, you want to hear the other side on Chris's partner, uh, listen for next week, next Friday, this should be out. So tell, tell us about, so, so having that experience before we get into the syndication, you have, um, you've done things uh, that we don't talk about a lot on here, right. In terms of creative financing and kind of starting 
smaller and growing that way. Tell us about what you did, how you found some of these smaller deals and how you creatively financed them to just kind of grow at your own pace. Good. I yeah. assume they were local. These smaller deals were local. Yes. Into your local market. Yeah, they're all local market and we uh, self-manage everything as well. So, and where do you live? Just just for some uh, over, uh, some idea here. Uh, Northeast Arkansas. Uh, the biggest oh, that's town right. in the area is uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Got it. Okay. Is it, we were looking at a deal up there. Was it Holly Springs? Does that sound familiar? Is that uh, in your hot, area? Hot Springs. Hot Springs. About, yeah, hot it's about two, two hours. Okay. All right. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. Please, please continue. All right. Yeah. So... Um, Going back to the smaller deals, uh, you know, I, I just started really networking with real estate agents, with you know, uh, loan officers in the area, just anyone that that knows about anything in this in this area for the smaller deals, and that's how I really uh, and still to today get opportunities to buy these smaller assets. So what we decided uh, early on when we when we joined the Warrior Program and all is that we were going to kind of have those two buckets of investing. Uh, we have the local stuff that we do that, as you said, Mark, we can we can get really good financing you know, opportunities on, and then we also do the syndication piece. And so those those are just the two different things that we do. And from the uh, you know. From the financing side, on the local stuff, uh, it's all value add opportunities to where uh, we can buy it at a fantastic uh, rate per door, per, per door, and just really, uh, you know, and that, that just really helps get in at the right deal. So we look at just as much locally as we do from a syndication standpoint. We say no to ninety five percent of them, and. Uh, the ones that we do say yes to just ends up being right in our our buy box. So talk talk about how talk about uh, a, a creative deal that you did um, that um, you know that that maybe you got into the seller participated or you did something unusual. Talk about you know talk about one or two of those. Uh, you know I think for us the biggest thing is is getting into them at at such a low price point that and having to do such a major flip to the property that you know you combine for twenty thousand dollars a door uh, in some cases and get financing from a loan to value loan to value or loan to cost versus uh, a loan to what you're paying for the property so in, in most cases what we're doing is you know we're buying them for thirty thousand or forty thousand dollars a door and then they're appraising post renovation at eighty to a hundred thousand dollars a door and we can get really good financing on on those, um, and, and that just is is really how we're doing it. And and the reason why it's you just really can't do that in a lot of other places is because I, I just don't feel like you can buy very many things at thirty or forty thousand dollars a door right now. Um, so it's just a it's a unique place to be. Uh, you know, I'm glad where we live uh, because I just don't think these opportunities are are in a lot of markets. No, I would have to agree. So, okay, so that's kind of a, 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 a unicorn situation as it relates to that. Well, so talk about, uh, so you're good with the underwriting. Talk about this recent deal that, that uh, you know, Mark even invested in. Talk about that deal. How'd you find it? Let's start there. Uh, it was on the MLS. It was- uh, Wow. You know, Rod, you mentioned that some people that own one apartment complex, they'll go to the guy that they sold their house from. And uh, this is what it is. These these two guys is the only apartment they ever owned. And they just went to their local agent. It jumped on the MLS. First time that uh, we offered on it, we actually missed out on it. Let, let uh, me stop you for one second. I'm sorry. I, I just want to hammer home what you just said. So one of the things that we teach our, our students is to get on the local MLS system, residential MLS for houses, okay? And because what'll happen is like, like in this example, these, these guys had this one apartment complex, they went to the agent that sold them their house who hasn't got a freaking clue how to market a multifamily property. And so, you know, they'll put it in the regular MLS system and nobody sees it there because nobody's looking there to find it. And so you find phenom phenomenal deals that way. And so that's like a ninja trick 
to make sure whatever market you're buying in that you have a connection to a local broker agent, residential broker agent. You let them know to put an alert in there if anything MLS shows up to let you know. And uh, it's just a great strategy to find deals. Anyway, I just wanted to hammer that home. Please continue, please. Yeah, and just to reiterate that, uh, I get notified of every multifamily property in the state of Arkansas that comes up. It can be a duplex to 40 or 60 units. I, I found some crazy, crazy ones on there. So, but I get notified every single one within about five minutes that it hits the MLS. That way nope. I get first crack at it. Nice, and then, nice. And, and then from this particular uh, deal, it, the first time we offered on it, we actually lost out on it. The people that they went with was an all cash offer that ended up falling through about two weeks later, popped back on the MLS as active. We gave them the same LOI that we gave them two weeks prior and they accepted it. So it's one of those also that, you know, keep it around and, you know, a lot of things end up coming back around, especially in 2023. Let, let me let me hammer that home. OK, so LOI is letter of intent. And in our world, you know, um, you never write a contract yourself and and you have an attorney write it or review it and attorneys aren't free. So you start the 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 process with a seller or a broker with what's called a letter of intent. It just lays out the main deal points on a deal, the purchase price, when the closing date is going to happen, how much earnest money, how it's going to be financed or whatever. All the main points is typically one or two pages is all. Actually, it's typically two pages. And that starts the conversation. It's typically not binding. But that way, if you agree on all the main points, then you let the attorneys hammer out the purchase and sale agreement. It's called the PSA. But it starts with that LOI. Whenever you're in this, wor in this world, you want... you. you you stay in touch with the brokers and the agents that have a deal listed because so many deals fall through. Well, they always have, even the, even these last few years, a lot of deals you'll get on the second or third time around. So you got to stay in touch with your brokers and agents um, so that you're, you know, you're, um, you're in this, you're in the, in the catbird seat when that deal comes avail, you know, comes back around. Two things I wanted to mention here, uh, Chris, uh, one of them is that, right? Which is why this deal was a deal. And there's two things that I liked about this deal. Starting there, I know, I think you said it was like 50% vacant. Talk about that and why this was a good deal for you and where it started at and where you think you can get this deal to. Yeah, so we purchased it for under 42,000 a door. So that is obviously a, a great deal. I think a lot, if if people aren't living in the Midwest right now, they're gonna send, you know hear that and you know they might not be able to buy a parking spot for that much money. And- Secondly, there was 11 units that only needed, call it a $1,500 turn to get them rented. So that was a huge bonus to us thinking it was just poor property management. We have these, these great units that need some paint, some carpet and a refrigerator, and they could be rented. And they were just sitting there vacant from uh, owners who haven't been on the property since 2019 and from a property management company that just didn't know how to manage a property. Now that's the second part that I wanted to talk about and why I like this deal because you guys are self-managing and I know you don't live too far. But one thing that was interesting is what it sounds like is you've kind of done the opposite of a lot of other investors, which is they might buy a bunch of units and have a third party come in and manage it and kind of learn the business. And then once they hit a certain unit count, you know, then maybe manage it yourselves. But it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have managed everything in-house from the very beginning. What what was the thought process behind doing that? The big thing, you know, is, is we have a system in place locally now that we like. Uh, you know, we have all the property management software in place. We have multiple employees that, that are in place. We have construction crews already in place from all our other things and all these heavy lifts we've done. So it, it was really easy to just tag along on, on that side of it and say, hey, you know, you guys want to do this? And, and we're able to just manage it from that way because we already have all those people and systems in place. And it, it just made complete sense to, to manage it in-house and, and get the unit turns done, uh, you know, from people that we know and trust. No, that, that, that's, that's, that's solid and, and makes complete sense. Uh, and what you're going to find guys is when you're dealing with smaller assets like this from a duplex up to a 30 or 40 even is it's smaller management companies and and typically unsophisticated management companies in you know in the world that i buy in which is 100 to 150 or higher uh you know or even much higher uh unit count um you're going to get very sophisticated management companies and and they've really got their act together continual training so on and so forth but in the smaller stuff you know, it's, it's challenging to find a good management company. And 
and you and but with it with that in mind you're going to find opportunity like chris found here with this particular deal um and so how did you how did you buy this thing how'd you finance it how'd you take it down to you i know you syndicated because mark invested uh but uh talk about the financing a little bit uh local bank so local bank yeah local bank just a relationship from a, a a local bank that have done some other duplexes some other fix and flips from uh went to him and got it done that way so ha- having that local relationship and the guy i can go to and trust and and the bank actually called me and said man this is a really good deal we want to finance it and that's that's a good place to be in when a bank wants to wants to do a deal with you sure is yeah that's you don't hear that very often that's 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 awesome and this debt if i remember is a little bit unique in terms of the, the the time period, the term and the interest rate, because I know interest rates are the hot topic. Everybody's talking about interest rates right now. Where are they going? Um, and obviously this one was at a little bit of a higher interest rate and it was still a deal. So can you kind of give like an overview of the debt and how that worked and kind of what that's going to look like for the future of the deal? Yeah, it, it was shorter term debt. So it was two years, uh, one year interest only and uh, 9% interest. So it, it was a little bit higher, but not nearly as high as, as bridge. So I, you know, I kind of considered it in the middle between uh, some agency debt and where, where bridge is sitting. So that was attractive. And from a, a break uh, even standpoint, we only had to be like 62% occupied and we'll hit that before the end of the year. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be positive cash flowing by January uh, you know, just being in upper sixties to low seventies as, as we're doing unit turns. And that's what, three so, months. So what's the, the pl- yes. Yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah, yeah. Three months. It's yeah. Pretty quick. We have, uh, yeah, we have five units that we've already turned with renters and, uh, we are getting $219 a unit more in rent by simply doing light turns and taking care of, of tenants. So what's the ultimate goal here? You've got two-year debt. So the plan, I'm guessing, is to get it to a stabilized place and then refinance it? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Smart. So let me ask you this. If you were to guess, you know, how many years or units do you think it's going to take for you to reach what your version of financial freedom is? Uh, Yeah, I thought about this one for a while when I saw the question. And I, I think it's, for us, three to five years. And and mm-hmm. I and and I say that only because I, I think we have really lofty goals. Uh, you'll see some of them behind me that I just really, uh, you know, there's a big places that we want to go. So um, I, I think you can get there a little bit quicker if you don't have quite as you know quite as lofty goals. But for us, three to five years, and and I think we'll be there. What are some of the big goals behind you? I can't read them. Ooh, so uh, I'll turn around just a little bit. Uh, I want to own uh, eight bowling centers by 2030. I want to visit all bowling seven. centers. Yeah, okay. bowling centers. I want to visit all seven continents by 2030 as well. So I want to do some very all seven. Yes. Antarctica too, huh? Yes. That'd be fun. Yes, Antarctica is on the list. <laughs> um, that is a place where most people can say they'll never go, and that's where I decided I wanted to go early on. Uh, you know, some of the other ones that aren't on the list is uh, a thousand units uh, in the next three years. Uh, I want to raise $2 million next year. Uh, I think capital raising is a big place and, and where things really need to go in the future. So that, that's a huge goal for us upcoming. And this is, you know, call it 10 or 11 months old. So um, I need to redo a little bit of the uh, 2024 goals here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, me too. Yeah, no, <laughs> me too. Now, I will tell you, uh, guys, this is a clue. He's got his goals on the board behind him in plain view. That's what we call a clue. I've got a sign on my bed when I'm laying in my bed. He used to say 100000 a month. It says a million a month now. Tiffy used to hate it, but it's still there, a million a month. So you get your goals in front of you. It gets into your subconscious, and that's, how, that's why my students are so incredibly successful in our warrior program we're up over a hundred and eighty thousand units that we believe they they own at this point it was just staggering to me by the way if you are interested in applying to the warrior program text the word crush to seven two three four five again text crush to seven two three four five uh to check us out well one thing that uh because we've talked about and you just mentioned it uh there chris right a thousand doors two million dollars money raised to get to that financial freedom goal because i i get this question all the time right how how do you make money what what are these doors what does all this mean um do you see yourself just continuing to do 
syndication moving forward to reach that? Do you want to continue to do the small stuff with creative financing, a mix of both? How how do you see yourself getting to that financial freedom point? I, I see it from both. Uh, you know, the, the syndication piece is huge for the scale side of it. Uh, but, you know, when you own 40, 60, 80, 100 some doors locally as well, that has, that has some big power, especially when you have the systems in place, the people to do it and manage it. Uh, I don't really have to do a lot in that side of the business. Uh, it just kind of runs itself. We have great tenants. Uh, we take care of them. I have some good maintenance workers. My wife is really good with our tenants as well. So we we're able to scale that side without it taking much time for me. So I can dedicate right now my time to capital raising, to deal sourcing and getting those systems in place, you know, moving forward into 2024. So I, nice. I, I, I like both. Let me ask you this. We've, we've really not done this before. Are you okay with listeners reaching out to you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, why don't you throw your email address out here and guys, if you want to ask him questions about what he's doing or the program we have or anything like that, just email him. He's a great guy. What's your email, brother? It is Chris at ways to wealth equity.com. How's that spelled the way it would be normally spelled? W A Y S ways to wealth.com or ways to wealth equity.com. Correct. Okay. Chris at ways to wealth equity.com. Love it. So let me ask you this. You know, we have so many listeners. I love to ask this question that haven't pulled the trigger on anything yet that, that know they want to, you know, get into this. They know they want to build, you know, some legacy wealth for themselves and their families and their kids and their kids and their kids, if possible. What, speak to them. Speak to speak to the people that haven't done anything yet that know they need to. You've got to find the drive and the why, I think is a big yeah. thing. You know, really got to find, you know, what do you, where do you want to be and why do you want to be there? And, you know, it. you may figure out what you want in life, but if you don't know why you want it, uh, you, you'll never wake up in the morning at 4 a.m. to do it. So, you know, my drive and, and all that is, is where I want to be long term. It's my family and show my kids. It's the, you know, I, I want to give my kids, you know, lots of lots of stuff that I wasn't able to have as a child and experiences uh, just growing up in a very modest household uh, for two parents that just worked normal W two jobs. So I, I just want I want a lot out of life. It's a, it's a short life, um, you know, it goes by quick, and I, and I just really want to have those experiences, that time with them. And uh, I wake up every day at 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. because of it. Wow. wow. That's early, man. I see why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I invested with the right guy, I'd say. Now, for the people that know their why, they resonate with the message that you just said. What do you think is one action item, one logistical thing that they could go do or take away from this um, that we can kind of leave them with before we end here? Yeah, so I, I'd say no matter what space it's in, whether it's real estate or being an airplane pilot or whatever, I don't matter what it is, get around somebody that's doing it. Get Find, find a mentor, get into a program like the Warrior Program, something, but, but get around somebody that is doing things that are bigger than you so you can understand how they're doing it, you know, possibly why they're doing it, and, and, just, and just understand what it takes um, because – when I first found Rod, I didn't even know what a syndication was. You know, I, I was that guy that drove down a, a road and I looked at a 200 unit apartment complex. And I, I thought some random guy that had a boatload of money on that place. And that is not how it works. Um, quickly learned that, quickly learned that, oh, you can be the person that does that as well. And it, it took getting in front of or and getting around the people in our program to be able to do that. That's great. Well, listen, brother, it's great to see you. Uh, I appreciate you coming on for a few minutes and adding some value and just keep kicking ass, my friend. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank All you, right. Mark. All right. you guys. So one other quick thing. We encounter so many people that are frankly frustrated. You know, they're looking in the mirror and they're frustrated that they haven't been able to escape the rat race. They haven't been able to build cash flow to the point where they're able to have financial and time freedom with their families. You know, and maybe they see other people buying real estate and creating, you know, incredible cash flow. And they think, well, it's just scary. You know, buying apartments is intimidating. And I get it. See, that's why we created our Warrior Mentorship Program. They're our coaching students and they've had extraordinary results. My students, I've been teaching about five years and they own upwards of 140,000 units now that we know of, right? And we feel like it's just getting going. Now we're looking to grow this group and really take it to the next level. And honestly believe that the greatest transfer of wealth could be upon us right now with this current economic environment. Everything's going on sale. 
So we're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework, really like a blueprint or a map, literally step by step. And then they're able to leverage our systems and our incredible network to raise money and equity, to find deals and close those deals and build partnerships really nationwide. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more, in our incredible network and take advantage of the unbelievable opportunities that are upon us, you can apply to my Warrior Mentorship Program by texting the word CRUSH to 72345. Or you can go to mentorwithrod.com. And what we'll do is we'll set up a call so you can check us out and we can check you out and see if it's a fit. Now again, you can go to mentorwithrod.com or text the word CRUSH to 72345 to apply and we will speak soon.